I'm joined by a man who had 125 pounds, is considered to be pound for pound the best fighter in the UFC, Demetrius Johnson, the longtime and only flyweight champion of all time. Now, Demetrius, your wife might be the pound for pound best wife on the planet. She's actually encouraged you to get more active on Twitch so that post career you'll have another career in video games. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's awesome, man. You know, a lot of these athletes, they get in this sport and they put all their eggs in this basket and not knowing that this this, this ride doesn't go forever. Uh, and you always got to have a, a second career. You know, you see a lot of people who join the military when they're 18 years old, they put 20 years in, they get out when they're, you know, young 40s and they go get another job. So for me, I'm just going to start and put uh, effort into my, ne my next career and hopefully I'm successful in uh, the video game world too. So before we get too deep into the UFC, I want to ask you. I'm going to name a couple of video games. I want to know who your character of choice is. Street Fighter 2. Oh, Street Fighter 2. Either way you can. Mortal Kombat. Uh, Sub-Zero or Reptile. Mario Kart. Uh, I like Yoshi and, and uh, Toad. Super Smash Brothers. Ooh, uh, Samus. Killer Instinct. Uh, well, it depends which one. If it's Killer Instinct Gold, it's TJ Combo. If it's Killer Instinct, uh, the new one, it's uh, Glacius. And finally, I'm going to come out of left field with one. Streets of Rage 2. Streets of Rage 2, Axel. Axel, wow. I thought you'd be a skate guy. He's fast, small. No, 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 no. Well, there's, there's no point to be fast in that game because it's a side-scroller, so you only can go so far. So you're looking for your 10th successful defense of the flyweight title this weekend when you fight Wilson Hayes. But the 10th doesn't matter that much to you. You're, not, you're looking for the 11th to beat Anderson Silva. And then beyond that, you're looking for as many as possible so that people won't touch that record. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So what's, you know, if you, could, if you could have a guess of how many successful title defenses you'll have before you hang up the gloves, how many are you looking for? I mean, if I say it flyweight and undefeated, man, probably 15, 15, I'll say. I mean, I got five or six more years left in me, so I'll say maybe 15 or 16 if I can keep on going. I'll be sweet. I'll be, like, be retired as a champion. I'll probably be the only, no, I'll probably be the only fighter to retire as a champion. Because when I'm tired, my black guys ain't coming back. <laughs> so that, you'll call it a day? That, that'll be I'll it? Call, I'll call it a day. <laughs> so when you're looking at these goals going into each fight, is it important for you to have them so that you don't become complacent? You, you keep having something to strive for? No, absolutely not. You know, the, I, I don't need to strive. I mean, the way I look at it is that, you know, fight to fight. You know, I take it one fight at a time, one title defense at a time, and then I'll sit back home. I'll go back home, relax, and my body completely healed and start doing different things in my life and then, you know, get ready for the next one and just keep on going as many as I can go. So I don't like to set high goals. I mean, if I get to, if I get to 10 or 12, that's awesome. If I don't, so be it. I go home and recuperate and then get back in the gym. So the UFC recently let Kyoji Horiguchi go in free agency. You beat him actually at 4.59 of the, of the fifth round, which is unbelievable. Uh, do you ever feel like the weight class is treated a bit like a second-class citizen, like it's not really given top billing? And uh, if so, how would you change that? Um, you know what? It, it's kind of hard to say. You know, uh, you brought up Kyoji Horiguchi, a great athlete, leaving uh, the flyweight division, which in my opinion, he was probably one of the top flyweights in the world. Um, so that was uh, the UFC's doing their thinking. Uh, with that being said, you know, it, it's all up to what the UFC wants to, to market. Obviously, they're a money-making machine, uh, and they want to, you know, obviously make back that $4. billion, how, much, how much they bought this company for. So that being said, you know, that's a question you need to ask, you know, Ari Emanuel and uh, Daniel White. For me, I just focus on fighting. I'm not a promoter. I'm, I'm a fighter. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, the bantamweight champion, who's got a, a pretty tough matchup coming up uh, in July with TJ Dillashaw, he's expressed interest in fighting you either at 125, which he would move down to, or have you move up to 135. Of those two options, which is more compelling? Uh, obviously, 135. I mean, they're both compelling, but for me, I would just go up. That way, if I win, I get his belt. Or then, because, you know, I can stay at 35. You know, for him to come down 25, he wins. You know, does he keep the belt or does he relinquish it? Because if he comes out to beat me, then I'll just go back and beat whoever. Then I'll just fight for the belt. <laughs> I'll just buy a fight for the belt and get it back. I'm like, thanks. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a, it's, it's a great fight. Um, and if it happens, it happens. And at 125 pounds, there are still some guys you haven't fought. Is there anybody in that division that you look at and say, you know, this is somebody I'm going to fight down the line. I've got to keep my eye on this guy. No, I don't keep my eye on anybody. You know, winners focus on winning, losers focus on everybody else. So I just focus on myself and... You know, the, the landscape of the fight with the vision could change in a drop of a dime. Um, your last loss came almost six years ago. Do you ever look ahead and think, man, what would happen if I lost again? How would I feel, you know, and, and 
is avoiding that of the paramount importance to you? Oh, I mean, no, not really, to be honest with you, because I, uh, six years ago, I was in a different place in my life to where I am now. And, you know, whether, depending on how my career goes, you know, I would look at myself as a very successful uh, person. I'm learning a lot, being a champion and being a professional athlete. Um, and if I were to, you know, if I were to lose, I'm not sure. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by a lot of great role models to where I won't feel, you know, I'm not going to go commit suicide or anything like that. <laughs> well, obviously, I wouldn't take it to that, that extent, but, you know, <laughs> to each their own. Um, it seems you're incredibly popular on Twitch. You've got over 3 million views of your different videos uh, of you gaming. Um, in terms of the, the, the UFC, you're going to be headlining a card on, on Fox this weekend and on TSN here in Canada. Um, how do you strive to improve your marketability? Is that something that you ever focus on? Uh, you know, I, I do focus on it a little bit just because it, it just helps build your brand. You know, if I get, you know, Fox will probably do about 5.5 .5 million viewers. So 5.5 .5 million viewers will probably know that I have a Twitch channel. So hopefully, you know, one ten percent of that comes to the Twitch channel and, uh, and hit the follow button. And it can uh, see them in a different platform than mixed martial arts. In Canada, we had a very successful Mighty Mouse of our own, Damon Stoudemire. We're hoping that your success is uh, equaled here in Canada on TSN this weekend. We'll see you defend the belt against Wilson Hayes only on TSN 5. You can see it right here. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.